In this video, we're going to be taking a look at official SteamOS 3.8 running on the all new Lenovo Legion Go 2. And it definitely looks like somebody's been doing some work in the background with SteamOS for this thing because uh, getting into it, mostly everything here is working except for one thing. We'll talk about that in just a bit. But so far, it's been a pretty awesome experience running SteamOS on the Legion Go 2. And I've got the uh, Legion Go 2 with the Z2 Extreme here. Just to show you, we've got official SteamOS Hollow 3.8 and uh, all of the face buttons here are working. So if we tap our left and right Lenovo buttons, we can bring up our menus. And another awesome thing is we've got full TDP control plus power profiles, just like we see on the Legion Go S. The LED indicator up top also changes when we move through the power profiles, or you can go totally custom with it up to 35 watts on this unit directly from the built-in TDP control. HDR is also working here, and the screen on the Lenovo Legion Go 2 is absolutely amazing. I personally love it, up to 144 hertz, 1200p, and with HDR enabled in Windows while it's calibrated, or even Steam here without any calibration, it looks really good. In this video, I want to go over a few things, and then we're going to get right into some testing with the Lenovo Legion Go 2. Okay, so yeah, this is pretty awesome. It looks like the Legion Go 2 is like 99% fully functional with SteamOS 3.8, that main branch installed on it. Only thing that I can't get working here without a third-party plugin is RGB control. We'll move into the settings. I want to show you here. Uh, RGB control usually listed under, I believe, customization with the Legion Go S. It's not located here. Can't find it under controller. But I've installed the third-party plugin known as HueSync, so we've got full control over it there. Uh, go into our settings. You can see we're on SteamOS Hollow 3.8. And of course, we've got that AMD Ryzen Z2 Extreme, eight cores, 16 threads. This unit has 32 gigs of RAM in total, but I've got 16 dedicated to system and 16 to the iGPU, which just happens to be the Radeon 890M with the Z2 Extreme. Usually, when we install SteamOS on a non-supported handheld, a uh, few things we can't get working here is TDP control directly from within SteamOS. But with the Legion Go 2 and SteamOS 3.8, we've actually got the performance profile section, just like we see on the Legion Go S with SteamOS out of the box. Low power, balanced, performance, and of course, we've got custom. Uh, moving down, this was awesome. TDP limit directly from here under custom. We can go down to 5 watts, all the way up to 35 watts, and we've got manual GPU control up to 2900 megahertz, just like it should be on the 890mi GPU. So I've been sticking around 25, but uh, through my testing, we'll just go ahead and check out some of these performance profiles, just in case. We'll go to balanced here. But yeah, really awesome. Uh, again, just RGB control, that's really the only other thing. Wi Fi. Bluetooth, we'll check Bluetooth because I didn't check it yet. Yeah, so it's gonna scan right there. We've got Bluetooth working on this unit. And I did go through and start up one game just to make sure that the fan was functioning properly. And yeah, it looks like the BIOS is handling the fan just fine. Uh, right now we don't have a way to manually adjust fan curve from within SteamOS yet. I'll just let the BIOS handle the fan for now. But it's really awesome to see this, and I kind of had a feeling that we might get some really good support for the Legion Go 2, given that, you know, Lenovo is the only other device manufacturer out there that's supported by SteamOS on at least one of their devices. I mean, they sell it out of the box with SteamOS installed, the Legion Go S. So I was thinking we might see some decent compatibility over here, and it definitely looks like it. I do believe we'll get RGB control on this. It's probably using the uh, same type of controller as the Legion Go S is. And it's not 100% confirmed, but there have been rumors that we may see the Legion Go 2 with SteamOS installed right out of the box. So you could buy it as a SteamOS powered device. And they do have two different versions. So the one I've got here is the Legion Go 2 with the Z2 Extreme. They also make the Legion Go 2 with the Z2 Non Extreme, which is basically the Z1 Extreme APU just kind of rebranded. I've got one of those on the way and it should be here in a couple days. So keep an eye out on the channel. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into some testing here. We'll start out with Cyberpunk 2077. 
I'll move over to the built-in screen in just a bit and test a few games like that, but uh, I was running some tests here because I will have a video coming up with this thing facing off against the ROG Xbox Ally X and even the Steam Deck at lower TDPs. But right now we're in performance mode, which looks like it's taking us up to around 25 watts here. 1080p because I'm connected to my game capture. Steam Deck preset. We're not quite at 60. It's still really smooth here. And even with my game capture, I've got VRR enabled. So with a free sync monitor, I mean, I'm not noticing any kind of screen tearing or anything like that. And remember, the Legion Go 2's built-in display also supports VRR. It's working here in SteamOS. So uh, screen tearing, you don't have to worry about it with this. And of course, we could get a little more out of this by taking the resolution down or even going to medium settings. But I wanted to test frame generation here because I do think it's a viable option for a handheld like this. So I'm going to go ahead and enable it. And now with frame gen enabled, I was actually able to take the wattage down to 20 watts, still using the Steam Deck preset, but we're using frame gen. And at 25 watts, we're going to be up in the mid 80s on average with it using frame gen here with these same settings. But taking it down to a 20 watt TDP still gets us over that 60 mark. And like this, we're going to get more runtime out of the built in battery. And again, keep an eye on the channel because I will have a video with this thing facing off against the ROG Xbox Ally X with SteamOS installed and even the Steam Deck at a 15 watt TDP. Next up, Witcher 3 with HDR on. And filming this and then uploading it to YouTube isn't going to do it justice. HDR on this screen is absolutely amazing. I mean, it looks beautiful here in SteamOS. I did no calibration whatsoever. I just enabled it and started the game up. We're at 1200p medium, FSR set to quality, HDR 25 watt TDP. Originally, I thought about using the Steam Deck preset, but that really takes everything down as low as possible. And I know with this new GPU and the Z2 Extreme, We've got a lot more power to work with here, and even at a 25 watt TDP, we're seeing averages in the low 80s with it, and with HDR enabled, it is beautiful. The next game I wanted to test was Doom the Dark Ages, and we recently got a nice little update, so we've got a handheld mode, which kind of adjusts everything for, let's say, the Steam Deck or even something like this. But I did drop the resolution down to 1440 by 900. So that's a 900p resolution on a uh, 16 by 10 aspect ratio display, which we have here with the Legion Go 2. Feels great like this. We're at a 25 watt TDP, no frame gen. And you could always enable frame gen and get a lot more out of it. But I think that this is fully playable. Spider-Man 2 on an iGPU has been a real pain. Uh, these handhelds really struggle with it. Even this, I mean, we've got the Z2 Extreme, which does give us a more powerful iGPU, but we still need frame gen with this if we don't want to run it at, you know, lower than 800p on this thing, given that you could use some FSR set to performance. So right now we're at 900p, so 1440 by 900, medium FSR frame gen on, 25 watt TDP. Elden Ring, medium, 1440 by 920 watt TDP. And this is one of those games that kind of gives us a little bit of an issue just getting up to that 60 mark on an iGPU. Usually around 56 up to 58. Even though I'm at a 20 watt TDP right now, if I took it up to a 30 watt, it's not going to make a difference. I have to go down to 720p at 25 watts with this low settings to lock it at 60. And I really didn't want to do that because again, we've got that variable refresh rate display. And even though we're right there under that 60, if I didn't have that frame counter on, still a really smooth experience. Borderlands 4 just needs some more optimizations. Right now we're at 800p medium FSR frame gen on 30 watt TDP. Once I bring uh, my special ability up, you'll see that on the sides there, we got that shield going on. There's a lot of ghosting going on with the frame gen happening, and there's really no way around this. I'm at basically the lowest resolution we can do right now. I could take FSR to performance with frame gen on and get a little more out of it, but we're still going to see that fluttering on the sides with frame generation.
The last thing I wanted to test here was an easier to run indie game at a very low wattage. We're actually at a 6 watt TDP, locked at 60 hertz, and it's going to run this game just fine. The main reason I wanted to test it was just to kind of get an idea of total battery draw, and I do think more optimizations will be had with this. The OLED screen here will draw more power than let's say an IPS, and right now with this at a 6 watt TDP, we're drawing around 11.3 watts on average from the battery in total. So that's everything going on with the system. And with the Legion Go 2, we've got a 74 watt hour battery. So that's around six and a half hours of runtime. But I do think that uh, in the future, we're gonna see a little less draw. And even if we could drop it down one and a half watts, That'll take us up to over seven hours or seven and a half hours of runtime out of this thing. So far, not bad at all. I mean, I'm really impressed by what we're seeing here. Almost everything's working with the Legion Go 2 and SteamOS 3.8. And once more optimizations are had with this operating system, I will make another video. But in the meantime, I'm going to be working on a video with this thing facing off against the ROG Xbox Ally X and the Steam Deck. So if you're interested in seeing something like that, it'd be really cool if you could hit that like button or think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this device, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.